we had, we had a lot of duck. Um, I don't think we had any chicken. We had a lot of duck, a lot of tofu. The vegetables were spectacular. Um, a lot of seafood. And that's just a taste of what 18 principals from Tennessee encountered on their trip to Shanghai, China. Principal Robin Newell of Mitchell Nelson Primary and Elementary School was part of that exclusive bunch. The goal? To find out what schools in Shanghai are doing right. And the reason we chose Shanghai was their, um, te they take a test, all 15-year-old um, students across the world take a test called PISA. And Shanghai, the first time they took it, scored number one in the world in math, science, social studies, and reading all of them. And we want to know why. why what, what are you doing that's so fabulous? Because we'd like to steal some of those things. So what's different? Their teachers um, teach one subject, like there would be math teachers or reading teachers, and they loop with their children up through the grades. So if a kindergarten teacher, a reading teacher, would teach those children kindergarten and then first grade and then second grade and then third grade and so on. And so the reading teachers and the math teachers plan all of their instruction together and then observe each other teach it and then give feedback, which um, is, is quite opposite of how we do it in the United States. The, the teachers um, at, at, in American schools, the, basically the only feedback they get is from administrators. And this model has expert teachers who plan good quality, fabulous lessons and then observe them and then they give feedback on how the lesson and the teaching could be better. One of us said, we don't give our teachers the opportunity to observe other teachers like that. And the Chinese teacher said, well, how do they get better? And we were like, indeed. Unlike most travelers, Newell didn't just bring back souvenirs. She brought back new ideas, principles, and concepts that are already being used at Mitchell Nelson. I chose our fourth grade and sixth grade classrooms. And what they have done, and, and each grade level has done it a little bit differently, but um, they have changed their schedule so that they can focus on one content area. And um, like, like I'll take sixth grade, for instance. One of the teachers is gonna teach the reading and the other's gonna teach math and the other one's gonna teach science and social studies with the reading integrated. Um, so they have redone the schedule so that they can do that and then my, my hope is the next step will be that the, there will be some vertical planning with the math teacher from sixth grade and the math teacher from fourth grade. You know, we're, we're going to slowly implement that. And not everything she learned in China is going to be able to make it to Murfreesboro. Some of the things that, that we have, some hurdles that we have to get over to do some of that stuff here. Um, is scheduling. You know, we are required to provide, um, you know, so many hours of reading a day and so many hours. So, so that's, that's been a little bit of a struggle. But the strategies and techniques Newell is able to implement, she's truly excited about. So we're, we've got some things in the work and, and talking about that and um, thinking about how to use the really good things that we've seen over there um, and make it work in the classrooms in Murfreesboro.